The figure above shows a metal hex nut with two regular hexagonal faces and a thickness of one centimeter. The length of each side of a hexagonal face is two centimeters. A hole with a diameter of two centimeters is drilled through the nut. The density of the metal is 7.9 grams per cubic centimeter. What is the mass of this nut to the nearest gram? Density is mass divided by volume. Okay, so we're given this nut and we wanna to wanna to know the mass of this given the density and probably given sufficient dimensions to get the volume of this. If we can get the volume, given that we have the, then the volume and we have the density, we can then use this relationship to find the mass. So the goal was to find the volume. Once we've got that, we're done. Now, finding the volume for this is not simple. There is no equation in the front of the book and in the front of the test for the volume of this figure, especially with the hole through it. So we need to do a little work here. Let's just ignore the hole for a second. Let's imagine this was just a hexagonal nut with no hole in it. What would be the volume then? Well, the volume of that, the volume of any three-dimensional figure that is made up of any of these kind of prism figures is the area of the base times the height. So if we can find the area of this hexagonal face and we multiply it by one centimeter of the height, that'll get us the volume. So now the question is, how do I find the area of this hexagon? So let me redraw it over here. We're told each of these equals two. Note that I can draw, this is the center of the hexagon. I can draw a triangle here. You might say, okay, well, what's the point of that? Well, if this triangle is say an isosceles triangle or an equilateral triangle, I can maybe use this to find the area of the triangle and therefore to find the area of this entire hexagon because this hexagon is going to be made up of six of these triangles. So what I need to do now is find perhaps the angles in this triangle, find some more information about this. Well, what do we know about a hexagon? A hexagon has got six sides. So let's go ahead and figure out what is the measure of one of the angles in a hexagon. And to find that, you need to know this equation, n minus 2 times 180 all over n. This is the number of degrees in one angle of a regular polygon. So n is 6 here, so we're going to do 6 minus 2 times 180, this should be like that, and divide this by 6. So it's 4 times 180 divided by 6. One twenty. So here's the thing, if we go ahead then and split them in half by drawing these lines, these sides of the triangle. Each of these angles is 60, which what do you know? That must be 60 as well, because 60 plus 60 plus 60 is 180, which means this is an equilateral triangle. So let's go ahead and take this triangle out here. Now to get the area of this equilateral triangle, we need to drop a height, drop an altitude, Notice this is going to be 60 still. This will be 30, so we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. We can now find the length of this side right here. In a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the hypotenuse is 2x, and the side across from the 60 is x root rat radical 3. So therefore, continuing on, the value of this height is just going to be 1 radical 3. Since x is 1, this is going to be 1 radical 3, which means the area of this triangle is 2 times radical three times a half, right? Base times height times two, times a half. So one half times two times radical three. So we get radical three. Now, therefore, we've got six of these triangles. Each of them has got an area of radical three. So the whole area of this face, area of the hexagon, is just gonna be six of these radical threes. So six times radical three. Now we multiply this to get the volume of the hexagon. It's gonna be six radical three times one which is going to be, of course, 6 radical 3 cubic centimeters. We've got our volume. We've got our density. Now we can go ahead and find the mass of this nut. Well, actually, no, not yet, because now we have to incorporate the fact that this uh, nut has a hole in it. This hole has got a diameter of 2, which means it's got a radius of 1. So we can find the volume of this. It's basically just a cylinder. If you kind of imagine it's extending to the other side. Let's find the volume of the cylinder. We'll subtract it from the volume of the nut, and then we've got the volume of the actual the volume of the hexagon, and then we have the volume of the nut. So the volume, if you look up front, of a cylinder is pi r squared h. So in this case, it's going to be pi times 1 squared times 1. So it's just pi. So the final volume of our, of our nut is 6 radical 3 minus pi. Now, density, we're told, is mass 
divided by volume. We want to solve for mass. So mass is going to be equal my density times my volume. My density, I was told in the problem, is 7.9 grams. The volume is this, which I'm going to have to put into my calculator. So I multiply this, and hopefully I will get a mass that is the answer. If not, we'll be very sad after all this work. Uh, 6 square root of 3 minus pi. That's the volume. We'll multiply this by 7.9. We get 57.2. What do they want this? Uh, nearest gram. So mass is 57.2, which will round to just 57 grams, which thankfully is the answer to this insane question. So these are, of course, problems that they are throwing out there as what SAT math problems could look like. So these are not guaranteed to be the types of questions we'll see. Um, what I immediately note is the ridiculous rampant difficulty. I mean, this question is insane compared to what we've done previously. I mean, the previous questions were child's play compared to a question like this. I don't know where they're going with this one, frankly. There's so much work here. You have to remember so much stuff. This is an insanely difficult question, in my opinion. I mean, you know, it's doable, but I think it's really hard. It's going to be really hard for most students, the vast majority. Um, even those of you who know how to do this, you know, it's very easy to make a mistake and still get the answer wrong. So where are they going with this? Um, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, the other hard questions they had in this weren't this bad, so maybe this was just a weird fluke and they're just experimenting a bit. My guess is that, well, we won't actually have anything like this in the real test. It's just nutty, so to speak, nutty. Uh, um, but yeah, it's... I wouldn't worry too much about this one just because it is crazy, but we'll have to monitor to see what their difficulty ramp looks like because so far, in my opinion, the questions have been pretty straightforward. So in order to, and, and because they're down to four choices and there's no guessing penalty anymore, they're going to have to find a way to make this test hard enough so that they get an even distribution of scores in the way they want it. So maybe they, we will have questions this hard. I don't know. But it's just something to keep in mind. Um, certainly a difficult question. Wait, actually, you know what? I just looked at my notes. This is ranked a medium. Can that be possible? Let me double check that. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's ranked a medium. Okay, so now I'm totally confused. But in any event, let's see what happens. Uh, if you didn't follow this, it's okay. Uh, understand the steps. That's probably important. But the overall approach to it, hopefully we won't have to deal with that on the real test. But again, we'll see.